Hello, welcome to Let's Talk Cars, the show we changed the set even more than Ferrari changed its marketing pitch. Seriously, I mean, think about it. Season 1, I was sitting on some wooden sawhorses and had a table. Season 2, there was no table. Season 3, the table's back, I'm sitting on an actual, like, office chair with no back. I mean, yes, things have changed on the show since it first started. I'm wearing new outfits now, um, I think my favorite one of the first time actually episode in shorts. But, uh, throughout all the series and all the episodes that we've done, even the co-host specials, the one thing that's almost always been in the set was this. The big brown Ford Focus Station Wagon. Now, I know it got a small comparison to the Prius review in my little uh, co-host special with Theo Krauss in the first season. But since then, I decided that I want to do a full in-depth review on the car. So here it is, my review on what I probably think is the weirdest thing to ever have the Ford Focus name attached to it, the ZXW series. Here she is in all of her somewhat awkward glory, the Ford Focus SE ZXW 2006. The final year of the Ford Focus station wagon. Why? Because no one bought the things, because when you think about Ford Focus, you think about small, nimble, quick hatchback. You don't think of a big brown and gold station wagon. Now, I know it's a bit cluttered in here because I'm actually filming in the garage, but it's easy to moving outside because getting this thing in and out of this garage door is a bit of a pain in the ass. Anyway, so this, this, this little exterior to walk around quickly. So, yes, you think Ford Focus, you think of the small nimble hatchback, not big station wagon. However, for what it looks like, it looks good, and I think it's because it does not look like any Ford Focus ever made. See, when Porsche made their cars like the Panamera, when they tried to try to stretch out the normal two-door look into a four-door look, it failed horrendously. Ford just kind of slapped a badge on a car that looked nothing like a Ford Focus and said, hey, it's a Focus, let's get more people to buy it. And honestly, I'm 100% beside, um, in front, uh, yeah, I definitely agree with that little decision that they did right there. It's a perfect decision to make. Uh, moving on to the front grill, it's... Actually made in the same stuff they put in the Ford Mustang, Shelby grills. Not bad. And of course it's a Ford badge, no specialized focus treatment here. And now you actually can tell this is 2006 Ford Focus because, again, if we go around to the back... I'm filming from a, behind a pile of junk here. Sorry about that. It has not... The, it has the... It had the new badge that started out in 2006. Not with the weird curly Q font, but this one has its own kind of very standout font that's become the normal one now. Before that, we had like a little kind of nature type of curly cue looking font for the Ford Focus badge that honestly kind of has a reek of cheese when it gets applied to anything. Um, we've not actually replaced any car parts of this car since we got in 2009. Although, we got this car pre-owned and it's still, it's still got a shit ton of mileage on it. It's still a great car. Just after a while, I don't think it any long distances. But yeah, it's actually not a bad looking vehicle. Especially since it's a focus station wagon. Let's move on, made a slight we? attempt to clear out a little bit of a pathway between the junk, the set, and where I would normally put the tripod right there. I don't quite know what's wired. Right? That's the tripod I normally use. In fact, if you guys, I think I actually got a question once I never actually answered, which is how much money I've actually spent on buying things for the show. My answer is six dollars because I bought a tripod mount for the iPad. Anyway, let's get to the, on to the inside now, of the Now, before I do show you guys the inside, I'm just gonna say one quick thing. Um, we've been actually remodeling my uh, basement bedroom in the. A uh, big house over there, my house, and so that's why this car has been used to go back and forth from Home Depot and the junkyard to drop off and pick up stuff. That's why it's got a bunch of crap in it. Anyway, let's get in. Uh, I think actually last time I was on camera, at least inside, had a huge door in it. Let's throw the lights up here though. So, about the car itself, the interior, right? This is 2006. I mean, there was a, there was actually a GPS available, but this is standard. So, no phone charger. We actually have the actual cigarette lighter. This has never been used. Um, because no one in my family actually smokes, so we don't have any heavy use for this. But, see, normally this would be replaced by a phone charging port, but we have the actual, because it's a base model. Remember, this car came out pre-iPhone, so largely before, like, major smartphones. Um, and then, of course, you have, on the steering wheel, the horn. That's so much fun there. Um, of course, on, off, air conditioning, stuff like this. Not, not, not a whole ton of fancy buttons on the steering wheel. Now, of course since I was, like, six years old or something like that when I first got this, um, car, I loved this button. The hazards button. Let's get out to show you what it looks like. Um, I mean, come on. What kid who likes cars at the age of six does not like the hazards button? It's just an amazing button. That causes so much fun. Very, lots, of, lots of flashing. Great amount of fun. <laughs> Tripping on what that is. So this, this garage is filled with clutter. Let's grab the keys. 
Um, yeah, turn those off. Uh, so yeah, of course you also have the standard setup for indicators and what, what have you right there. <sighs> now I'm gonna try also the, the car being turned on in the opening sequence of this video was actually this car. So yeah, now it's on and you get the beep 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 because I'm not wearing a seatbelt because I'm not actually going anywhere. So yes, it's on, you got all the little light up things here. Um, not a digital dial, which is nice actually for a car like this. Uh, we do have electric windows and glowing dials and the, of course the electric adjuster for the wing mirrors. Also, which is kind of cool with a car like this, you can actually, under here, so where my thumb is, pull down a little flap and adjust the height of your steering wheel. I'll put it right back to where it was. I hit the pedal by accident, sorry about that. And so, another thing about this car is that it's, uh, the seats are manual, they're not automatic seats. In fact, not even a lot of cars today actually have those as standard, so yeah. Um, as you can see, it's a very, very basic and stripped down interior. Of course, you got the, it's automatic, so you got um, park, uh, reverse, neutral, drive, two and one. Very simple. And of course, another, I love the little box here for storing stuff. Normal like pens, pencils, and mints or whatever. Anyway, well, let's go on to the engine. I don't bay. know if you guys can actually see it, but down there, there's a little drawing, well, not really drawing, a little drawing, a little sticker. That's where the hood release is. So I'm gonna have to pull that towards me. And now the hood should come up in the front. Now, actually, I'm actually gonna turn off the car right open up the hood just because of safety reasons and stuff. Because this car doesn't often drive anywhere, so I'm gonna get greeted by like a face full of just smoke and exhaust and shit. Not exhaust, because I'm not the back part, but you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, let's, uh, the key's on the little thing over there. And there's a Toyota, because it also has a Prius key fob on it. Um, and then open the hood. And you so the here it is, the um, interior of the Ford Focus's engine. Now this thing does not like to stay up in the air that much. There's a stick for it somewhere. In fact, I've actually even better idea. I'm just gonna put the thing, I put on the tripod while I go turn on the car. So, um, see you guys in a minute. Yes, it's extremely loud. Um, and it doesn't really look any different. I want to show you what it sounds like from the front on the camera. It's very loud. It's a very, a very, a very bit a ticking noise that developed in the car over the last few years. Since it's an older car, and not really having repairs on it. Oh, it still works fine. And none of the engine's exploding, so that's good. I'm going to throw off the engine now. Now, if you guys uh, remember from Let's Talk Cars co-host Theo Kraft special, I tried to rev the car in neutral, which would work fine if I've been driven for a few months and I basically fumigated basically the entire driveway and the garage. Now, I'm not going to do that again, so I'm just going to take the tripod away and refer back to me holding the iPad for now. So I'm not going to try to rev the car in neutral because that was only to show you how it differs from the Prius is revving in neutral, which it actually doesn't work that well. Really, actually, no, it doesn't work at all. But when I did it, kind of fumigated the entire, um, you know, garage and driveway. Also, there is a rock which has now been bleached because of the uh, effect the engine has had on it. And some leaves. Don't know how those got in there. But yes, we've had to make some... We've not actually had to buy any huge replacement parts for this car at all. I mean, that's replaced the little manifold over there. And don't try hitting any of the hammer. It'll, come up, it'll probably fall apart because it's a Ford Focus. It's um, a very basic wiring, although this is before Ford started color coding all their vehicles so that, that anyone, doesn't, anyone that doesn't know how to operate an engine properly or with severe OCD issues might get a bit pissed off by this. But anyway, yes, that's the interior of the Ford's engine uh, bay and just the front hood compartment. It's got, it's, got a, it's got an engine, it's not a V8 or anything like that, it's, I think it's actually a little level V6 I think it's running on. Um, or six, it's a 6 or something like that. I don't actually quite remember. But um... It's not anything powerful, but it's power up. It's definitely powerful enough to haul this thing around, plus a whole ton of stuff that they want to put in the back of it. So, 
Also, these cars are about, these things are worth about $3,000. So if you guys want to get one that's relatively cheap to haul a bunch of shit around, then it's definitely your vehicle. As long as it's not a truck. If it's a truck, get a truck. I know that's not how you're supposed to do it, but it's fun and loud. So dropping hood in three, two, one. There you go. Welcome to a video of the car's exhaust output. Now, since it's not that cold and I've been revving it a little bit, it might not be that bad, but this thing, since it's old, and if it's not been driven for a while and we start it up, it will create clouds of exhaust, as you saw on the video with, well, Theo Kraus. So I'm going to walk for the camera very quickly here. Did I mess up the focus? Ha, get it. Focus. And focus. Camera focus. The car. And that pun doesn't work. Damn it. Okay, anyway, let's uh, start up the floor focus. Of course, the key's out of the ignition after the last one. So, uh, starting up in uh, three, two, one, go. I did one quick pump of the throttle there, one quick pump of the acceleration on the um, gas pedal. Not too much, so hopefully I don't fumigate the entire garage again. Also, wouldn't, because this thing's been driven actually quite recently to haul stuff, as I said before, from Home Depot to home, to dump, stuff like that. But yeah, that was the exhaust, and this thing actually makes a very lovely noise. I love almost any engine noise, apart from a Dodge Challenger or Chargers V8. But this car, seriously, makes for a station wagon a very, very, very lovely noise. Back to the rest of the interior now. So yes, again, I've actually moved the keys from the addition, just so nothing goes wrong. Uh, not, not, that, not that anything would. Now, I'm actually going to show you off the boot, or the trunk if you're American. My dad's British, I say, uh, boot, but my mom's American, so I say, hood. I don't know, it just happens. Uh, anyway, so let's, uh, push the button here. Now, there's no push button on the back, like, where, underneath the license plate where most cars have a release switch. You have to insert a key or push the button on the inside of the car. Now, that's because it's a base model 2006. Now, I know some cars from, like, BMWs from 2002 have a button down there, uh, underneath the license plate, like, right around here. But, it, this is 2006, and it's a base model, and it's a Ford, and it's cheap, so it's not gonna have one. As you see, we're taking stuff to the dump. P plenty of pipes, but, see, the seats are folded down. You can fold down the, the, uh, row of seats, or fold it up. When folded up, the seats do not fall down on me. We actually have to have to replace these. Oh, what, because it's headlock, so it will fall down. This has fallen down and hit, hit me in the head many, many times, and it's making creaking noise. I'm a bit scared of it, actually. Not scared of it. Anyway, wait, wait, otherwise the seats actually go over to here. So that's, it's, you can actually, even if you have the seats folded up, still a lot of room in the boot, or trunk, or whatever you want to call it. Well, you got a lot of room in the back regardless. So it's a pretty cool interior. Actually, once, I, on a camping trip, when the people in the tent were being way too loud, I just crawled into the car, put the, put, put the back door down so I couldn't hear them, uh, fold, this thing, fold these things up towards me, and put, use the angle of the bed of the sleeping bag. It was perfect. I've also, if you also have to close it at a certain, very certain speed, otherwise it doesn't actually close properly like that, you see? So now I, I have to go all the way around again. That, that's just a fault, fault with me wanting to slam the door of the, the back door of the car. Open it up again. And... Very firmly, see? No shaking. Now let's just cover up the rest of the interior of the car. We'll okay, so we're back in the car's interior. Sorry if the footage is a little bit grainy here, there's not a lot of light. This, this lamp up here provides... Not a whole ton of light. It's for nighttime use only, and even though it's not nighttime out, it is not the ample amount of light in this car for it to work properly. Anyway, so let's let's look at little flaps up top. Now most cars here will have lights and a mirror. We just have a mirror. Same thing over here on the um, passenger side. These little handles, of course, are always here. I think pretty much most cars have these, even both at front and back. Um, now I'll wash off the horn, but let's do it again because it's fun. <laughs> Love that. All right. Now, um, this steering wheel, I've locked it because I try to turn it when it's off too hard to one side. Now, locks. I believe I showed that off either in the blooper reel video or just in the main video with Theo Kraus on our code special. Also, if you guys have seen it, yeah, the windshield is a bit cracked. Anyway, now I actually have to turn on the car to show off one other things I was going to show because, you know, safety. On you go. I forgot about that. Also, yes, when the wheel locks, you have to do an incredibly interesting uh, se sequence of um, braking maneuvers to actually get to be able to turn your key again. That's actually what that. That's actually why one of the footage sections that we had actually end up in the blooper reel. So yes, right back. to get it unstuck, all you have to do is push down the acceleration pedal, the uh, the gas pedal here down here, and twist extremely hard, extremely sharply. Now, turn the car on. 
now we get started with this thing over here, the shifter. Not only a shifter, but it's, sorry, you can't shift gears, but you can shift modes. So it's in park. You can always push it in and adjust it. That's only when the key car, that's only, yeah, yeah, that's actually, first flip this up, and then lower the parking brake. Which has had a severe amount of stress put on it, so it's extremely difficult to do sometimes. Then, from brake, and shift. Park, reverse, neutral, drive, two, one, back to park again. And fine, let's just do it once, shall we? Now, back to park. Yeah, it's been turned back off again because I don't want to just be uh, running an engine in a garage, even though the door, doors open for no reason. And of course, I can show you guys the glove compartment system. No lock, basic glove compartment with a same Christmas ornament in it because 10th grade. I don't know why. I got, I got someone in 10th grade. I don't remember where or why. Does it work? No, good. All it did was sing Silent Night, extremely annoying. Um, but yeah, that's inside this car. Also, there are extremely good heating and cooling systems in this car for the air inside. Like for the AC, you can, and yeah, 2006 car still works, even though we've been putting this thing through paces many, many times. Um, we've actually never actually had to place anything on the center console here. Uh, apart from this volume knob popped off. But yes, it plays CDs. I like that. The CD player is actually fucked though, I think. Uh, yeah, it's actually, the CD player is actually broken, sadly. But yes, you can mute calls, stuff like that. And now, the car does not come with any all-star Bluetooth technologies. We actually had to buy a, uh, before we actually got the Prius, a little Bluetooth box that clipped up here for your phone. Um, so yeah, you can do Bluetooth calls, but you have to have an external box for it. However you can, just if it's wired, if it's actually wired in, mute stuff. Now, there is a biro holder, making this car like a Rolls Royce. I, oh, I lost the pen. But also... Let me just uh, show this off. I love this noise. That's the bad noise. This is the good noise. There you go. That's what probably that's actually doing doing that in a button pushing is very bad for the car, but it is definitely one of the most satisfying feelings a car junkie could have. That's just a great feeling. Anyway, this has been the Ford Focus 2006 ZXW review. A bit messy, a bit all over the place. A bit like this car, actually. Thank you guys for watching.